There's uh, different types of use wear on my tools. I've got a bunch of antler tools, uh, hammer stones, different types of billets. And uh, the use wear on these is an interesting question. So I'm just going to try to zoom in on some of these. These are sandstone hammer stones with some use. Um, I don't use this one very much. It's uh, kind of smooth. Just minimal use on that one. This one I've used quite a bit. You can see how there's some facets developing. I haven't used this one very much. Lately I've been using it more. But in the past I haven't used this one very much. My uh, favorite hard hammer stone broke about a week ago. So that's some obvious use wear there. This is my next favorite hammer stone. Now this is extremely hard. It is rough but it's extremely hard. I've used it quite a bit and there's not much evidence of use on this one but I have used it quite a bit. This one not so much. This one I have also used quite a bit. But on my hard hammer stones, it, they don't develop facets as quickly as on the softer hammer stones. I do have a small hard hammer stone with very distinct facets on it that I've, I used to use this one quite a bit. And um, for abrading and for direct percussion. And I think the abrading is what causes the uh, has caused most of the wear use on this one. Just the abrading. Here's another uh, hammer stone I use. I don't really like this type because it does chip easy. It's uh, it's got the right consistency to uh, remove some very nice flakes but if I hit anything hard, it'll chip, and that's why this eventually broke. This is a very similar material. I've used this stone and this one quite a bit uh, to, for hammer stone and for pounding sinew. This one I haven't used in a long time. But the use wear is pretty obvious. And I use this mainly on very, very hard material to remove to remove thin flakes. It's a hard wood. I guess you could call this use wear also. I had a, a stone set in this hole to use as a pressure flaker and it just cracked, sheared off. I've got to figure out some way to take that out of there now. I use this mainly for spalling. This is my main spalling tool. It was originally cut flat right there and rounded slightly, just like this here. This is where the uh, the antler originally was attached to the skull. I just made it flat there with the intention of hitting this spot on top with, with a uh, mallet or a stone and knocking off flakes from a core with this part. But I ended up using it like this with my hand to uh, knock off flakes from cores. And the uh, use wear is kind of random on this one. These are all have been sanded in 
sawed flat. So there's no use on the other ends, but this is this is the business end here. Now the moose antler is very hard and I have part of the skull still attached to the antler, which is even harder. But as you can see, it's not indestructible. Facets are developing. And the bone itself seems to crack and flake more than the antler if I just use straight antler. I haven't used this one as much as this one, but you don't see any really big chips removed from here. Whereas on this bone there's a there's some large areas that have been broken off. There's no use on the on this side at all. This was my original mallet that I was using when I first started my indirect percussion. And I saw it at an angle like this on purpose to start with. Because if as I'm hitting, I don't want this part of my billet to hit my work. So I saw it at an angle. But you can see there's a lot of use wear from me using this as a uh, direct percussion billet. A lot of, well, there's some polish from my hand, some sanding marks from the sander. I, I rarely use this end, but I do use it occasionally. So there is some use wear there. This is my latest billet. It's starting to wear out. This uh, pith in the middle is very soft compared to the outer uh, crust, I guess you could call it. I don't use this end at all. This is the original surface and I just, this is naturally rounded and through use it has become worn out and depressed right here. There's some more tools in here that I've tried to use. Uh, this is a bone, piece of bone from a cow leg and I don't have very much success with bone direct percussion. It tends to break easily. Much easier than antler. I've used this one quite a bit and you can see the, some of the use wear for indirect. But I used this only a few times and it just broke right off. And I spent a good deal of time actually making it and not getting much results. So I don't use bone very often. I have a new one that I made that I may try out, but I doubt that I'll use this one for pressure or for indirect. I can, if I wanted to use something for pressure, I could just as easily use an antler, maybe even more easily because it takes time to shape this. And it's really not worth the time where I could just pick up an antler, it's already in the correct shape. This I've used for both pressure and for indirect percussion, and it's, it has some resharpening. Sometimes I use this end as a billet, but there's very little use wear on this end. Indirect usually causes a, a facet to develop, whereas if I use mainly pressure, I think I have, this one is used mainly for notching and only for pressure. And the use wear is different. It's rounded. It's not chipped. When I use indirect percussion, it chips off the end of the antler. This is another tool I use to hold items for pressure flaking, to use for pressure flaking. I'm going to start using um, antler instead of this river cane. The antler is just fatter, it's more comfortable to use. 
And uh, I've already got a hole drilled in the bottom of this one and the top of on both ends. So I'll be using this mainly for indirect in the upcoming videos on uh, my ABO techniques. That's it.